like one of the most smoothing foundations ever. Like I felt like I had the best of the best when it came to cream and liquid blushes. And then I got these three and I was like, wait a second. Much more affordable, kind of like the best of both worlds. One of the worst foundations I've ever tried in my life. Completely separating off my face. Hey guys, and welcome to today's video. So today I'm going to be doing a way past overdue faves and flops, a good old faves and flops. And I'm not even gonna call it monthly faves and flops because we haven't done one since March. It is the end of July. So I apologize, but I just kind of took a break from that. I'm gonna be talking about all the products that I've really just fallen in love with from the last, you know, four or five months that I've been testing, but also the few that I found to really just, just not be it for me. So if you wanna find out what I've been currently loving and not so much loving in the last few months, then keep on watching. The first one is the L'Oreal Infallible Matte Lock Primer. This is not new by any means, but it is new to me. It's the one I just always am wanting to grab. This is the actual product on my hand here. Nice, like creamy, almost hydrating feeling. So it's not gonna like dry your skin right out. It basically dries down. It feels like there's nothing on your skin, except it maybe gives it a little bit of like a silky kind of hydrated feel. It smooths the skin. And it also does provide a slightly matte finish. Your makeup glides beautifully on top. I find that this is actually one of my favorite mattifying primers of my whole entire primer collection. It like, controls my shine for a really long time. It really helps my, you know, my makeup wear all day long and keeps it from separating or breaking down. So I really recommend this. It's from the drugstore. It's really affordable and it is an absolute incredible, incredible primer for us combination to oily skin types. So I absolutely love this guy. Moving on to some foundation. So the first foundation that I've absolutely fallen in love with within the last couple months is actually a radiant finish. And this is why I had to include it in today's video so, because for me to absolutely love a radiant finish foundation is very rare. So this is the It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better Foundation Plus Skincare, a really, really beautiful medium coverage, super lightweight, radiant finish foundation. It does have that nice kind of dewy look to it, but when you do set it down, it's not overly dewy or radiant, but I do find that I notice compared to like my matte finish foundations and even some of my natural finish foundations, it just looks a little more healthy on the skin. It looks like my skin is really, really just bright and juicy and hydrated and and just really, really healthy. And I do find that it, it looks extremely smooth. I love my matte finish foundations because they keep my makeup intact, but I, like I like that look of like just juiced up, healthy, hydrated skin. And this is exactly what this gives you. So this would be good for all skin types in my opinion. I'm acne prone combination skin type with textured skin. So it's hard to find foundations that work and that lasts all day. And this is not only one that keeps my skin looking hydrated, feeling hydrated, but it also actually wears all day long. This wears better than some of my natural finish and some of my matte finish foundations. It doesn't crease easily. It doesn't break down and separate easily. Am I saying it never does? No, because there's no foundation in my collection that never breaks down or never gets cakey. It's one of the longest wearing foundations and it's good for you. It has those skincare ingredients and that's what I love about this as well. The next two foundations are actually powder foundations and they also are ones that I did recently in the last couple months, a side by side comparison so I tested these both in the same video so these are the one size turn up the base versatile foundation powder and the pro filter soft matte powder foundation from Fenty Beauty these are both absolutely stunning powder foundations so if you pick either or I think you will be happy this one is personally a little bit lighter coverage than the one size it's also maybe just a little bit less smoothing, but I'll be honest with you, this is by like minuscule points. I would say they're both really smoothing to the skin. So if that's what you're looking for, you will be happy with both. I would say that the one size one is like one of the most smoothing foundations ever. Both of these are really great because they have great coverage to be worn alone. It's gonna give you a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful matte finish 
smoothing to the skin, and they both wear all day long. If I had to pick one, I would say I pick I would pick the one size because it's just a little, as I said, a little extra coverage, and it also I do find maybe wears just a smidgen longer. They both are great though. They both wear, I would say, 10 plus hours. Even when you're oily, they like touch up really nicely. You can use them on top of concealer, on top of foundation, and you can use them doing so without it getting cakey. I used this one on top of foundation today and it does not look cakey at all. I used it on top of my concealer under my eyes. It didn't make things look dry. It didn't make things look crepey or um, cakey. And I can also do the same with the Fenty. So the only difference is that I find the Fenty maybe looks a little bit more skin-like. So if you're looking for something a little bit more natural, I would pick the Fenty. It's not like a whole lot of a difference, as I said, but this one has a little tiny bit less coverage. It's a little bit lighter coverage. I'd say it's a good, you know, high medium once built. This one though, I think you can get it to close to full coverage. And this one is maybe just a smidge also less skin-like, as I said. I really love both of them. They're both really versatile and usable in so many different ways, and I recommend both of them 100%. So the next product that I have is a Kaja Stackable, and it is the Sculpting Trio. So this is the one that has the cream bronzer and the powder blush and highlight. I absolutely love this. I'm using the contour today. It is a beautiful, super pigmented, yet really easily blendable. It just melts into the makeup cream contour. It's really foolproof, and I absolutely love the way that it just blends into the makeup. It doesn't ever look, you know, chalky or pill up or patchy. It lasts all day, it doesn't fade. It has a beautiful powder blush as well. This, by the way, is in the shade butter up so it's the lightest one they do have three different shade varieties this one has a kind of satin finished blush it's a beautiful shade it's also blendable it's not too warm it's not too cool i really like that and last but not least the highlight is stunning as well it's really really nice and light reflective but it's not the most beaming blinding highlight it's actually quite natural yet still super finely milled like it doesn't emphasize texture. It's really, really nice, but you can also wet it and really build it up and it can be super blinding and beaming if you love that super, super bright highlight like me. Um, so it's kind of a good versatile one as well. And I think it is such a good little, you know, travel friendly, stackable cheap product. And I, I use it all the time. It's definitely a go-to for me. The next products that I have are all cream blushes. I was trying to like, test these and try to find maybe one that's better than the other, but they're all just so good in their own way. I can't not include all three of them. The first one is by Melt Cosmetics. I'm wearing it today. This is in the shade Honey Thief and it is the Cream Blush Light. So this is one of the most beautiful cream blushes I've ever used. It's just so pigmented, again, so blendable. It almost like has this diffused look to it. It's very actually smoothing to the skin as well. It doesn't separate your foundation. You can use it underneath and on top of powder. Again, make sure you're careful if you're playing with creams on top of powder. I've mentioned this before even with the really good quality cream blushes that are good on top of powder, you still can ruin your makeup. So you wanna be really gentle and not blend too much. It does work, it doesn't lift the powder. Like I felt like I had the best of the best when it came to cream and liquid blushes. And then I got these three and I was like, wait a second. Definitely recommend it for sure. I've been really loving Melt Cosmetics lately and this is definitely one of the top products from their brand. And it wears all day as well. The next one that I have here is from Tarte. It is their Breezy Cream cream blush and it is in the shade pink sky it's a beautiful formula it melts it into the makeup doesn't separate it lift it move it around shift it it really is easy to work with it's pigmented yet not too pigmented so this would be probably the one out of all three I'd recommend for those of you that maybe are a little bit more of a beginner with cream blush it's probably the easiest one to work with and it's also probably one that is maybe on the more sheer side now 
don't get me wrong, it's very easily buildable to the point where you could get it just as pigmented as the other two, but it is so easy to work with. And I do find that it looks a little more natural than the other two options I have here. So it's really, really beautiful cream blush. Again, works on top of powder as well, especially if you're careful. And it's just, it's just another hit. So the last one I actually just uh, could not find because I'm in the process of reorganizing my makeup a little bit. I will input a video here of me swatching it for you. It is the Hourglass Vanish Blush Stick. I was a little bit hesitant to get this because it was so expensive. And I thought, how good could this be compared to the, like, the other ones that I love that are much more affordable? And then I tried it and I was like, oh wow. It is so easy to work with. It is so pigmented yet really easy to blend out. A beautiful shade. I have it in the shade Sacred. And I really, really, really do think it's worth the money. I just love it so much. I usually apply it right to my sponge. It's hard for me because I'm, I just am gonna basically repeat myself. All three formulas are pigmented yet blendable, they're buildable, they are the perfect shade in their own way, like this is the perfect coral. And then I do find that the shade Sacred in the Hourglass one is a little bit deeper and darker, but not too dark, like it has a little more like richness to it, whereas this one's a little more bright. And I do find it is just one of the most flattering cream blush blushes on me. Like all three of these are definitely right now my top three cream blushes that I would recommend currently. Hourglass one also works on top of powder. Okay, moving on. We have one more blush. Actually, we we have more than one. <laughs> I've been loving blush lately. So I got the Pat McGrath blush and I was like, again, it's one of those blushes that you're like, you know what? It can't be that much better. It's so expensive. Can it really be worth the money? But it is. So this actually reminds me of the Clinique Cheek Pop blushes, which are my one of my absolute favorite blushes of all time. What I love about both formulas that I do actually find quite similar is that they are that super, super natural, like undetectable finish, a part of the makeup, a part of the skin, powderless formula. Like I feel like cream blush looks better, but powder blush is easier. So this is like both in one. It looks like cream blush. It's super natural on the skin. It's not powdery at all. Yet it's really, really easy. Like, you know what? Let me just pop a little bit on. We just got to do it. It's really pigmented, but not too pigmented. Does it not just add the most beautiful color? Do you just even see how it swatches? Like where it's, is that powder or is it cream? It almost has like the slightest bit of sheen it's it's completely matte there's no glitter but it like looks so like smooth and like blurred look like it's it's really a beautiful blush formula i absolutely love it so those are more expensive options all worth the money in my opinion but there's a cheek product that i've tested this month that is much more affordable and that i really 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 have fallen in love with these Cheek Palettes by ColourPop. These are the Sweet Cheeks Cheek Palettes. And the two that I have here is the Extra Glazed and the Sugar Frosted. My personal favorite in color, you know, preference. If you are darker skin tones, they do have darker options, which I do like to see. So these might not be your favorite color scheme, but it's the formula as well that I love. So it comes with three powder blushes and one of their super shock highlights, which I really, really like. Because it also comes with a highlight, it's like you're not only getting a blush. It's more variety in product. So the extra glazed is really nice because it has some pretty neutral pinks, a little bit more of like a deep kind of rosy pink. There's two mattes in each are very pigmented, really, really blendable. So um, this is from the, again, extra glazed. And then a satin finish. And the satin finish is just, it has a little bit of that somewhat like sheen to it. And I really love those. So it gives that healthy glow. And then the highlights, they feel like cream. And then they apply really, really, really easily. This is the highlight here. It's just like seamless. It's that wet look. It's really beautiful. They're easy to work with. And then this one here is the Sugar Frosted. It's a little bit more warm toned. The highlight is stunning from this as well. It almost has a bit of like a duochrome effect. It's right here. 
like it's kind of in the light you get a little more of that gold shift so i really like that i really do love these cheek palettes i think they're a more affordable option and it comes with a lot of product and they're all really stunning formulas so i think you guys would love those now let's move on to eyes a product that i've actually really liked the more i use it the more i'm like you know what i do really love this is the rare beauty weightless eye primer so this is one that is kind of like the best of both worlds in a sense so i really like my mac paint pot or the p louise base they have the pigmentation and they're going to really cancel out veins and discoloration and set down a really good base those are really really great for that reason I also love like Urban Decay Primer Potion and Hourglass Veil because they're a little more lightweight. They're a little bit thinner. This guy is like a straight dab in the center. It's a super thin, super lightweight formula. This is the applicator. This is the formula right here. Much thinner and more lightweight than the MAC Paint Pot in the P. Louise, but it also has some tint to it. Maybe not quite as much as the MAC Paint Pot or the P. Louise, but it has some tint to it. So it's going to cancel out those lines, veins, and redness and discoloration, but also be lightweight. It really does you know make your eyeshadows pop it really does grab onto them and make them wear all day without fading this is also one that i've found works really well with one of my favorite techniques to prevent creasing under the eyes i did a whole video on it so i will link it below it'll also be up in the cards right here my favorite one for that was the hourglass veil it was almost one of the only ones i had um, that I would use under the eyes, but I do find there's a lot of other eyeshadow primers I've tried that just like kind of make the concealer and the foundation go kind of funky or go kind of cakey. Um, and this one is another one that I find I can really use under the eyes as well. I used it under the eyes today and on the eyelids. So I think it's a really, really good eyeshadow primer. So there are quite a few products that I've tested in the last week or two that I am not including in today's video because I don't think I've gotten a good test of it. And I just don't feel comfortable coming on here saying I love it or I hate it yet. But there are a few products that I tested only one or two times that I already know I absolutely love and this is one of them this is the Patrick Ta eyeshadow palette hold on a moment while I clean it because this thing never stays clean here we go that looks a little bit better so this is the Patrick Ta major dimension new eyeshadow palette and let me tell you I'm in love with it it's everything I want in my life this is a really, really stunning eyeshadow palette. It has like the everyday color scheme you want. And so this is something I could use for, and I have used for a super natural, super natural eyeshadow look. But it's also one that is all in the same, very, very unique. It's hard to find a palette that has a color scheme you'd wanna use every day, but still be really, really unique. This has number one, cream shades. And at first I was like, eh, how much, how exciting can these be? These are really good for if you're wanting to do just like a quick little like, you know, um, contour in the eye, you're barely putting on any, any makeup. It's almost like a cream contour for your eyes. Now you can use your actual face cream contour, but it's nice that it's included in this palette. You can also use it as a base to help really grasp the makeup, make it wear all day long. You can use them as eyeliner. And even when you just apply them in the crease before you go in with the mattes, it just creates this beautiful dimension. It's named really well. It's honestly such an incredible palette. The formulas through and through are pigmented, blendable, creamy, minimal fallout. I have no issues with this palette. Every Everything good I could say about an eyeshadow palette, it is in here. So I'm obsessed with this and I really, really, really love it. The next one that I have here is actually the one that I'm wearing today. I just recorded a tutorial for this look, so stay tuned. Tuned. it's I think coming up I think I'm gonna post it next Monday it kind of turned out to look a little bit more in fall I think once I added the dark lip I was like hmm this looks like uh, autumn to me so this is the Natasha Denona Zendo palette it has beautiful beautiful mattes it also has a couple like creamy mattes like they're almost like cream to powder which I uh, sometimes I'm like, mm, do we like these? Do we really like these? And these really are stunning. You can use them on a fluffy brush, like a normal matte. And they also have this like diffused blurred look. I love it. Love, love, love those cream formulas. There's also this brown 
And I used this all over for like the definition in the crease and it gives such a rich look. That would be how I've described these. They're really rich shadows and I love them. The mattes are, they're, you know, Natasha Denona's typical stunning mattes. And then the metallics are absolutely stunning as well. I have this one on the lid. It's beaming, it's a beautiful gold. You even have these blues. So I'm really, really impressed with this palette as well. I love the color scheme. I think it gives so much variety. It's It just gives you so much potential. It's not just another bronzy palette. I think this one has a little bit more substance to it than the last your summer palette. And so I do personally think that this one is gonna be, um, if you want more substance to your palette, more to play with, you're gonna love this. Then we have one more high-end eyeshadow palette that I, oh, I grabbed the wrong one. I'm gonna insert a photo because I my battery's about to die and I don't have time to run upstairs and grab it. It is the Pat McGrath Quad, but in the Divine Blush collection. Again, Pat McGrath is very similar to Natasha Denona. The formula is always incredible, very innovative shades. I really, really love the shades in that. It gives a, a really stunning, a little bit more like richness than her, the one that I actually have here. So I really love it more than this one and I already loved this one. So the only common I would say about the Divine Blush Quad is that it only includes one matte and it is a very dark matte. So if you're wanting to really diffuse or have a transition shade, you're gonna have to find something within your collection. But I do have to say that I'm so glad that she included all three of the metallics she did. The Divine Fire Nectar, as I said, one of the most stunning shades. It also comes with a nice, a nice bright, inner corner highlight, which I do find sometimes is missing from her quads. I think it gives you actually so many different look options only with four eyeshadows. So even though it's quite pricey, I really think that that is one of the best color schemes of her collections that I've really, really enjoyed. And if you don't have the money for that, that's okay. You don't need to spend that much to get good eyeshadow. If you have it or if you wanna invest in it or you wanna save for it, you will not be disappointed. But if you don't have the money to do that, I have some other options here. The next three are from ColourPop. I'm sorry, I gotta start venturing out in terms of eyeshadow into like Maybelline and L'Oreal. I apologize. I will be doing so in the near future. But the next three are also from ColourPop which I do include in the drugstore category. Even though you have to buy them online, they are quite reasonably priced. The reason I love these, because they're really not all that exciting, but the reason I love these is because they are perfect for those that just want something small, that just want something easy. Maybe you're the type of person that you do the same look every day and that's it. And these are perfect for that. Now you can get multiples so that you can create so many different looks, but I do think these are perfect for like the minimalist that just want something simple. So these are the eyeshadow quads by ColourPop. They're part of the Sweet Cheeks collection. And the reason I love these is because I do think that the layout of them and, and everything about them is so perfect. Number one, they're really compact and they're small. Each one gives you two mattes and two metallics. Sometimes I find, you know, if there's one matte it's not enough to create a full look, but then if there's only one metallic, you know, you wish you had a little more to play with. But this has two mattes and two metallics. It's perfect for those of you that wanna maybe do a simple crease and then pop on a metallic in the lid and you're good to go. Like, come on guys, come on. ColourPop's metallic formulas are incredible for the price. So Citrus Fizz is a warmer, lighter toned brown. And I love the Cream Soda where it gets a little bit more neutral and, I, and a little bit lighter. They are so creamy to the touch, so creamy on application. And they're so light reflective and you know they don't emphasize texture. They're beautiful, beautiful eyeshadows. The mattes are also really, really pigmented, really, really blendable. And these are only, what, $10? So if you're looking for something small, easy, Simple, you don't need a million shadows and you want it to be cheap, these are perfect for you guys and the formulas are out of this world. Now I like to, to actually mix these, this one with one of these two so that I use the soft browns and these for transition shades and then I use the darker ones to really make it a bit more glam and, and add a little more definition. The metallics on these are stunning as well. 
Like that's the, the kind of bronzy metallic and they're not expensive, which is the best part. So then we have two more ColourPop palettes that I've tested in the last couple weeks actually. And I really, really fell in love with both of them. And they're so different. So we have the So Very Lovely, which is actually part I'll put the information down below for the giveaway and you can actually win your very own of the So Very Lovely along with a couple other things. So this, the reason I love this is number one, quality is there, formula is, is incredible, it's consistent with ColourPop, the mattes are pigmented, blendable, the metallics are bright and fun and light reflective and creamy. What I love about this is it actually has some cool tones and some warm tones. It has some pops of color. I feel like it is very summer, but you could also like with these pastels, do some spring looks with these like rich kind of um, terracotta or like plummy shades. You could do some um, fall kind of looks. So I think it's a very kind of universal palette that would be good for all year round. You could do a million and one different looks with this. So I think it's really, really worth the money. Like, let me just show you guys this shade right here. This is the shade or Organza. Like, is this not the one of the most stunning shades ever? Definitely recommend this palette. And last but very not least, the Your Golden Palette. So ColourPop's really always just on a roll. There's very few products that I test from them that I'm not impressed with. There has been a few, but there's very few, especially when it comes to their eyeshadow. So this is the Your Golden Palette. And it is a larger palette, so it's a little bit more pricey, but this is a really, really, really beautiful warm toned, but not too warm toned palette. It's hard to find a warm toned palette that isn't um, like really orangey. So for me being fair, I like warm tones, but I like like kind of on the more neutral warm tone side. So it has the like terracotta and the coral um, shades, but it also has quite a few neutral matte shades. Actually reminds me a little bit of the bare necessities. It has a lot of the same kind of soft browns, transition shades, and it, and it has those beautiful metallics, but in addition to the similar color scheme of the bare necessities, it has those pops of blue. It has the pops of coral and orange. It has a peachy metallic. It has everything I love about the bare necessities palette, but but more. I really love that there's so much to do with this palette, but you can also grab this palette on a day you're like, no, I have five minutes. I'm gonna just fluff a light brown in the crease. Want a little bit to play with, but you still want the staples. And I really love this palette. We have one more eye product, and that is a product I've only used twice. And I already know it's probably one of my absolute favorites of all time. It is the Velour Pretty Big Deal peptide and tubing mascara. There's so many things I love about this. Number one, it has a lash serum that's gonna actually help grow and improve your la natural lashes over time. Sounds great. It also is a lash shield. It's going to help protect your lashes from environmental pollution and all that. Sounds great. And it's also a tubing mascara. It's easy to remove. Typically my experience with tubing mascaras is they're good, but they just don't give me enough volume. They don't give me enough length. They're just not enough for me from my experience, but this one is the best. As you can see, I'm wearing it today. It really, really, really creates so much length in the lashes, the way that it, it feathers your lashes out, I feel like it really makes my eyes pop. Probably right now my favorite mascara, so I definitely recommend it. So right now I am absolutely loving the Huda Beauty Lip Contour 2.0. I know not everybody loves this right now. I know a lot of people are saying that it's not as good as the original formula. Now I have not tested the original formula, so that could be why. From my experience with this, number one, beautiful shade selection. So this is the shade Pinky Brown, and it's like a perfect pink pinky nude. It's not too brown. It's not too pink. It is a little bit difficult to sharpen. I will say that's the only thing I have to say about it. You just kind of have to use the little sharpener and just really lightly like take the tip of it, pull, like push the twist it up, take the tip and try to get it sharp. It's maybe not the most precise. That's the, that's the one thing I'll say, but the reason I've fallen in love with this is it's super long wearing. It lasts all day. It doesn't smudge or smear for me. Now, I don't know about your experience with it. If you don't like it, that's totally fine. You use what works for you, but I've had really good experience with this. So I really love that. I do love, and I love this actually more than I love the lip liner. 
This is probably my favorite lipstick right now in the whole entire world. It's the Huda Beauty Power Bullet Cream Glow Lipstick. So this is the one that has that kind of more shiny, dewy finish but it's not over the top. This just makes my lips look so smooth. Like it really does smooth out the lines in your lips. I think because it has that nice sheen to it, it really makes your lips look healthy and it really does almost make them look more plump. I really love this. It's maybe not the most long wearing lipstick ever, but it is one of the most flattering and that's why I love it. So we have one more product. It is last, but it's definitely not least. I have fallen in love with these so hard. It's like an understatement. The Love Me Liquid Lipsticks by MAC. Okay, let me tell you, 100% these are the best liquid lipsticks from MAC. The Powder Kiss comes off in like a minute. They don't wear very well. They look nice, but they don't wear very well. The Retro wears okay, but it looks like your lips are raisins. These are like the best of every world put together. They are a nice kind of um, satin because they're not super glossy, but they have a bit of a sheen to them. So they make your lips kind of similar to the Huda Beauty, like juicy and nice and full and healthy and hydrated, but they also are super pigmented and they also wear so long. They almost like stain the lips. So I think like they do somewhat fade over time. I got a good eight to eight or nine hours before it really started to fade and I had eaten and it's in, I feel like most liquid lipsticks that last that long are really, really drying and uncomfortable, but these are like, you barely feel them on your lips at all. So they're thin, they're lightweight, they're juicy and hydrating, yet they're also pigmented and quite long wearing. The only thing they're missing is transfer proof, but we can't have, I guess, everything we want. So I really, really love these. Honestly though, every single shade is stunning. I can't talk about it enough. So yeah, those are all my favorite products that I've been really loving in the last few months. Absolutely love them all positive thoughts, all positive comments. We love them. Now let's move on to the products that we don't love so much. So I actually have four foundations here that just, they're just, they're not it. The first one's probably one of the worst foundations I've ever tried in my life. And it really disappointed me because there's a foundation from the line that is one of my favorites. So this is the Shiseido Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting Foundation. It is so bad. It, okay, it, it looks good when you apply it. It has great coverage. It's super radiant, but then you set it and it's like patchy. Sometimes okay, but usually doesn't look perfectly smooth on the skin. I've had like times where it looks completely patchy. And okay, so even on the days I've had where, okay, it looks not bad. I feel like when I set it down, it actually looks kind of dry. I'm not joking you, it will crease on my nose within an hour. It starts to break down within a couple hours, maybe three or four hours. Like my chin in the review that I did was like completely separating off my face. So unfortunately, I really just don't think this is a good foundation. I think it's definitely not worth the high price tag. And it's really unfortunate. We also have the Marc Jacobs, which isn't the worst foundation in the world, but it's most definitely not the best. This one, it's just, it kind of looked dry, kind of looked cakey sometimes. I, it has coconut oil in it, so I think it broke me out one time. And it just looks kind of crepey under the eyes. And you don't get a lot in this one, so it's really just not worth the money for me. And then the last one is the Morphe Filter Effect Foundation which I know is probably surprising as I know a lot of people like it to me though it's just it's not the nicest looking on the skin it looks a little bit makeupy to me and it also didn't last for me for my skin type I know that my oils broke it down really quick it creased really quick and it just was not as good as some of my favorites. The last foundation I have here is unfortunately the Rare Beauty. I wanted to love this so bad because I know it works for so many people. I just think that it's just not for me. I don't know, I feel like for some reason, every time I used it, well not every time, but almost every time, I feel like it accentuates my texture. And maybe it's just not for textured skin. And it just also, some days it would last pretty good and then other days it would break down so fast. And that's just why it's in today's video, unfortunately. The next one is the Tatcha Silk Powder. So you might be surprised to see this in today's video because I know when I did my little review, I said I actually didn't mind it and I thought it was maybe worth the money. But I felt like the reason I liked it at that point was because it looked so natural 
oil. Like it almost looked like, you know, when you apply your foundation, it looks so smooth and dewy. And then sometimes when you put powder, it looks a little bit more makeup-y. I felt like with this powder, it just looked so natural, but I think that's because I normally bake and with this one, I didn't. So I think that's why I liked it at the time. Don't get me wrong. It's not the worst powder I've used, but it's most definitely not the best. I used this again a couple more times after and it kind of got cakey like it almost like stuck clung to certain areas of my face more than the other it's not the best under the eyes i would maybe use this as like a bit of a finishing powder because it does have that radiant finish a little bit so maybe you know to use it up since it was expensive i just think it's so expensive and unfortunately even though i love tatcha and i really do this one i just don't think is worth the purchase and i don't know i feel like it's a bit of a finicky one too like you're not supposed to use the sponge and you got to use a long bristled brush and do a buffing motion and I do feel like it doesn't always give you the best result it's just not one I'd recommend for you guys to go out and spend your money on especially since it's so expensive okay so then the last flop of the month is the buxom plump shot don't get me wrong this is a plumping like lip serum but the reason I have it in the flops is I just don't think it's worth the purchase it is a plumping lip serum I do think it slightly plumps the lips but I do honestly prefer a lip gloss that plumps i just feel like this one i've tried it um alone okay it's great and then i put my lip products over it doesn't make a whole lot of a difference i've mixed it in with my other glosses like it instructs you to do it like separates your lipstick almost i find and when i've applied it on top of lipstick it kind of separated the lipstick made it not look as smooth so i don't like using this on top of lip product um, and then when you use it underneath sometimes it actually can make it look a little bit patchy as well so i find the only way to use this properly in my opinion without it ruining your lipstick is to apply it like 10 15 minutes before you're going to put your lip product on or even longer and then remove it like, it was just too many times i was like oh no that doesn't work oh like it kind of limited me to how I could use it and then it's also expensive so I personally would rather buy the MAC plumping lip gloss or the Too Faced that you can just plop on top of a lipstick so yeah this one's just in my opinion not worth the purchase either so that is the end of today's video that is my current faves and flops I hope you guys enjoyed found it helpful all the videos that I mentioned will be linked down below along with the products and I hope you guys are doing well. I will be back to my monthly faves and flops. At the end of August, I'll be doing another one. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.